This NFL free agency has been absolutely insane. We have teams who have finally found at least a decent quarterback. We have every single running back going to a new team. And then we have teams who have literally done nothing all offseason. I'm going to be doing my best to cover pretty much all the big news that's happened this offseason. So, uh, yeah, this is the craziest offseason. We're going to go over it. We're starting off with the quarterbacks, and even though we haven't had a superstar switch teams yet, we've had a good amount of quarterbacks move teams, and we've even had a top 15 quarterback. The first move was the Patriots trading Mac Jones to the Jaguars, and I really like this trade for the Jaguars. You might be asking why. Well, it gives Trevor Lawrence some motivation to be an even better player as both of them were from the same draft class and Mac Jones was from Jacksonville, so he's going to feel a little bit more comfortable playing for the Jaguars. And if you're New England, also a win for you, you finally get rid of Mac Jones. I'm going to include two moves in one year and that's the Steelers signing Russell Wilson on a one year deal and then trading Kenny Pickett to the Eagles. Steelers, I like the signing, you already had a very crappy QB situation. Then you bring on a guy who's better than all those guys, and you bring him on a one-year deal in case he doesn't do well, and this is a make-or-break season for Russ. Last year was also a make-or-break season, but this one is just even bigger. If he doesn't perform well this season, he might be out of the league. And the Eagles traded for Kenny Pickett earlier today while I'm making this, and the Eagles, they got a solid QB too, but they also gave up a third rounder this season for him, so uh... I don't really like that part. Of all the quarterback signings trades, this might be my favorite one as Kirk Cousins signed with the Atlanta Falcons and what a huge W for the Falcons. As long as he can stay healthy and stay in his form, I think this is going to be very beneficial for the Falcons. As we all know, this is a very talented offense, has a lot of potential, but it was getting held back like crazy with guys like Desmond Ritter and company and with Kirk Cousins on the helm this is a very stacked and solid offense now B. John Robinson, Drake London, Kyle Pitts and they brought in Darnell Mooney a few days ago not only that but they still have Cordero Patterson and I don't know how he's going to do next season and they could also draft someone like Roma Dunsey in the draft so this Falcons offense could potentially win the NFC South and especially with Kirk Cousins on the team I'm rooting for this team hard. Speaking of Ritter, the Falcons finally got rid of him as they traded him to the Cardinals for Rondell Moore. Kind of a win-win, I guess, for both teams, or a man-man. Both are bench formers, and I mean, I think Rondell Moore can have more of an impact than Desmond Ritter, so I guess the Falcons won the trade. And yet again, another option the Falcons added. Some other notable quarterback moves, I know this isn't all of them, but Gardner Minshew to the Raiders, so far it's looking like he could possibly be the QB1 there, which I love Gardner Minshew, but he can't be your long-term QB1, but I doubt they'll have him for long-term. What's even worse is Sam Darnold looks like he'll be the QB1 in Minnesota after he will replace Kirk Cousins, which is horrible. Jameis Winston to the Browns, which I very like. That That's not a saying. I like it very much, though. I have to talk about my boy Drew Locke going to the Giants, making a very interesting three-way QB battle. And then Sam Howe being traded to the Seahawks, a solid QB2 option, even though he kind of stuck it up in the later half of the season. And it looks like the Commanders are officially done, and we'll draft a quarterback this year. One final thing before we move on. It looks like no one wants Justin Fields. He's not going to any team, so... uh. Kind of sucks to see, mate. He might be the QB2 next year for Chicago. We are now going to be talking about the running back position, and the running backs this season have been playing musical chairs. The first big running back signing was DeAndre Swift to the Bears, and DeAndre Swift was very solid last season with the Eagles, as you see the stats up there from last season. The only thing that worries me is that one, most running back ones are power backs. DeAndre Swift is not that. Also, this was his first really, really good season. His first season where he rushed over a 1,000 yards, so that also worries me. Hopefully, he's not a one-year wonder, but besides that, I think it's a pretty good signing. Now that we're talking about the Bears, we might as well just talk about them here for a minute. And this Bears offense, and I'm not going to be talking about their defense. Their defense is pretty solid as well, but their offense is looking scary for 2024. It's looking likely they're going to draft Caleb Williams at number one overall. Uh... 
He's got a lot of haters against him, but I'm really for him. Running back one, DeAndre Swift. I already talked about him. And then you got a one-two punch of DJ Moore and Keaton Allen. At the time I'm recording this, Keaton Allen was traded to the Bears yesterday, and a lot of people are hating on him as well. They're calling him washed and expensive, but he was very good last season. Any season now, he could just die out, if you know what I mean. But I think he's going to be solid. So and then you got Cole Komet. This offense is looking solid. The defense is also looking solid. The Bears could possibly win the NFC North next season. But to replace DeAndre Swift, the Eagles would go all out and they would sign one of the best running backs in the NFL in Saquon Barkley. Now, in my opinion, this could be a hit or miss. If you're getting healthy Saquon Barkley, you're getting a top three running back in the NFL. If you're getting unhealthy Saquon Barkley, you might, you might be screwed, honestly. But hey, uh, even though I'm a Cowboys fan, I'll be Actually, you know what? I'm not rooting for the signing at all. A few days later, another huge running back signed with another team as Derrick Henry signed a two-year deal with the Ravens and like Saquon Barkley. If he can stay healthy, they're getting a sec the second best running back in the NFL and the Ravens could possibly win the Super Bowl. Now, the Titans knew Derrick Henry was going to leave, so to replace him, they signed my Dallas Cowboys. Well, he's not on the Cowboys anymore, but they signed running back Tony Pollard, and they also signed wide receiver Calvin Ridley. Now, they're cooking they're cooking a five-star meal, and they're also cooking the building down as Tony Pollard. He was solid, but like DeAndre Swift, he's another elusive guy who could be a solid running back, too. I don't know how well... He'll work there as an RB1. And Calvin Ridley, he's a good option for Will Levis. They desperately needed a wide receiver one, but they are overpaying massively, and this could not go well. Meanwhile, Josh Jacobs signed with the Green Bay Packers, and he's really good, but this caught me off guard because the Packers already had Aaron Jones, and while he was aging, he was still performing well. I mean, he killed my team in the playoffs, but speaking of Aaron Jones, they would release him just a few hours after they signed Josh Jacobs. Packer fans are hoping they get a excellent one-two punch in that running back duo. And Aaron Jones would sign with the vision rival Vikings. And uh, I'm not going to go in on all of the signings with division rivals, but there's been a lot of that this offseason. It's been a common theme. The commander signed Austin Eckler and linebacker Bobby Wagner, and they're still decent players. But, I mean, if those were like five years ago, be phenomenal signings. I just don't really know what they're doing here and also both these guys are gonna look really really strange in a Washington uniform. Our last big running back acquisition we're gonna be talking about the Bengals trading away Joe Mixon to the Texans. I don't hate this at all. I know Joe Mixon like a lot of these guys are getting older but Joe Mixon is still pretty solid so I think the Texans got themselves a pretty good running back. It's not looking the greatest for the Bengals. T. Higgins has requested a trade but what I do like is that now Chase Brown and Chris Evans who are the running backs behind Joe Mixon, can now step up, and I think they can be pretty solid for the Bengals. There's a lot more I can talk about, like Aaron Donald, one of the greatest players of our generation, retired on Friday, and uh, this didn't really shock me because he wanted to retire after the Super Bowl, but the NFL, or no, it was the Rams, didn't send the retirement note to the NFL, so it never went through. But this time, it did go through. I'm going to miss Aaron Donald. And my team, the Dallas Cowboys, didn't sign anyone besides Eric Kendricks. The other biggest move we made was re-signing our long snapper, I kid you not. It's, it's really frustrating to be a Cowboys fan right now, especially since we're going all in. This offseason, not gonna pull the Skip Bayless tweet, but anyway, it's it's really sad right now, and we lost Michael Gal, Blade, Van Der Esch, and Tyron Smith, who were all who were all pretty good with our team, and I know they're getting older. It made sense to release them, but it just sucks to see them go as well. Simply, there's a lot to talk about, but right now I'm kind of tired. Like I kind of want to go to sleep, go eat some pizza, and uh, well, that's about it. Bye bye.